Okay, it's time to have a serious conversation with yourself. All right, it's not that serious, but it's about talking about defining your brand. And if you don't do it, someone else is gonna do it for you and you might not like what you see. Welcome back after a long hiatus to be at home with me, Brett Halstrom, and your insider guide on all things interior design. Today, whether you're an interior designer that's established or just starting out, we're gonna talk about branding because if you design your business properly, you will attract the clients you've always dreamed of. Those that share your vision, your aesthetics, the fact that you guys are overall awesome. But what really it does is separates you from the rest of the pack. So how do we do that? Let's start with the basics. What the F is branding? It's the perception of what people or clients or potential clients think about when they think about your business. It's not just all about the visuals, it's about your voice, it's the way you build your relationships with your network. Eventually it's the promise of what a client can expect should they choose to hire you. So it needs to all represent your true authentic you and that also includes your deepest passions. Well we have to walk before we run so let's break all that down. Here are my three easy steps for branding your business. Number one, I start by asking myself who am I and what the hell am I doing or serving? You must define your brand because as I said before, if you don't do it, somebody else will. There are a million of us interior designers. So what is it that sets us apart from the rest of us in the industry? You wanna define who you are, what your style is, are you specialized, do you do it all? Are you a residential commercial designer? But most important, like a vision board, you need to start making a client profile. Is your ideal client a bachelor? Are they a young family with kids? What's their style, their average income, their budget, their age? I mean, the more in depth you can be with your questions about your ideal client and yourself, the better. Because what's your ultimate goal? You need to figure out what makes you unique so people hire you. Let me give you this example. If you were in a small town and there were only three designers, and you have a client that has to compare the three of you. Nobody wants to be the cheapest of the design world, right? And if that's the only thing that sets you apart, that you're gonna be the Walmart of the design world, which is fine, I love Walmart, so like, woo. But there's a lot more to consider. Like an iPhone, nobody buys the most expensive, nobody buys the cheapest, they all sit in the middle. But that is not how you wanna define yourself. What that definition is of what you do is up to you. Are you the eclectic, quirky one? Are you the really neutral, eco-friendly, fabrics only one? Specialize, figure it out, it can be done. Number two, the visual branding, right? This includes things like your logo, colors, typography, website design, and of course that all should flow and coordinate with your collateral material like your marketing stuff, your social media posts, your business cards, the mood boards that you show your client, even email signatures or how you even invoice your clients. Every single piece should be thought through because it's always gonna be about the overall consistency. Visuals should also bleed across platforms like Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, Behance, TikTok, TikTok, how do you use TikTok? If you know how to use TikTok, message me, we'll have a different conversation because that's something I'm looking into. I'm not good at everything. Message me. Number three, and I actually think this is the most important and it's about being authentic. A lot of visual branding can be seen on social media and using Instagram as an example, there are two types of people, right? Another is wrong or right. One has two separate design accounts. They have a business one where you see all the pretty pictures and the process and stuff and it's separate from their personal account. And then you have what I do, where I mix it all into one. You see my designs, my inspiration, my son, the things that inspire me. Because for me, I believe that part of who I am is part of my brand. You get not just the design me, but the mother me, the quirky me, the holla making me. Your voice, your brand exists whether you acknowledge it or not. So you have to own it and you have to be consistent. And that includes your personal life sometimes. I'll give you an example. I posted a picture of me kite surfing a couple years ago and someone messaged me saying, oh my God, I totally forgot that you kite surf and I'm actually looking for a designer to redo one of the offices I'm doing. Are you interested? And I ended up building out not only one, but a few offices for this person. And I hadn't even spoken to him for years prior to him reaching out. Sometimes all you need is a connection because engaging with your audience helps you establish credibility and trust. People can understand when you're using a gimmick. So just being the ultimate you always helps. So what are my key takeaways for branding? Number one, think about your brand as a person and make sure you like what you see. Number two, at the end of the day, it's not just what it looks like, 
but what it feels like. Number three, how do you separate yourself from all the others? It's really important. Number four, there's value in getting outside help. No one can be great at everything. And even if you are great at everything, no one has the time to do it all. Number five, always remember you might create an amazing brand, but you have to promote it. And number six, at the core of branding, it's all about your reputation. If you're able to develop a positive reputation with your clients, your colleagues, your vendors, whomever, you'll get work and referrals. You cannot grow if you do not have anything in the pipeline and it doesn't help if you don't have any clients. If you have any questions about branding or how to apply it, I am still at home and you know how to find me. Stay safe, wear a mask and vote. And I'll see you next time.